Welcome to another afternoon of Hiller Soccer. I'm Steve Sweetapple along with Mike Terosian, and we will be calling the game with John Ritz on camera here live from the new turf field at the high school. Should be an exciting game, Mike. It's going to be a very exciting game. It's going to be the first game under the new rules. So we're, we're going to be learning a few things, I think, here. Um, it, it's very windy. The temperature has risen. I was here early this morning, set it up for field hockey. And we had the same wind, which is blowing your notes everywhere, <laughs> as everyone can hear. We had the same wind, but it was also about 30 degrees cooler than it is now. I was in a, I was in a parka, and now I'm in my t-shirt. So, But the wind is the same, and uh, that's going to be interesting on the ball, especially on a wide open field like this. Yep. The sun could even be a position here on the uh, on the one side looking into the sun. Yeah. And hopefully it looks good for everyone at home that's watching on YouTube and on HKM Ed. Yeah, and so uh, we will be playing four 20-minute quarters with a, a short break between each one, part of the new COVID-19 safety precautions that are put in play. As, as you said, Mike, some of the rule changes, there's no throw-ins, no corner kicks. Um, well, corner kicks, but no... No directly into the no, box. It's got to be on the ground. Correct. So we'll call it a corner pass. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of the futsal rules. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You know what? I was just thinking that. I have I was exposed to futsal for about one month throughout my all my coaching careers yep. in soccer. And futsal is a, is a lot different. And that's, that's exactly what it reminded me of. Very good. Yep. Also, goalkeepers cannot punt or throw the ball past midfield, which I, honestly makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, I, I there don't is see no, the There difference. is no heading. You're not allowed I, I, to head the ball. So. Exactly. So I don't see the difference that makes. Um, and you'll probably only see one player in the circle, and I'm not sure if you're going to see anybody around the circle like you usually see. Normally you see a nice little pass off to a circle player, but nobody can do that. So the first game of the season for both teams, Tri-Valley League broken up into two 16 pods. The boys and the girls will play home and away series Saturdays and Sundays against the same team. So. These two, same two teams will meet tomorrow in Medway. In Medway, correct. And we're underway. Medway with possession. We'll be a little slow on the names here, folks, as this is the first time we're seeing the rosters. And hopefully everyone's hearing us okay with this wind. We got extra windshields on our microphones. And we're also wearing face masks, which... <laughs> nice, poke, nice poke away from Butler. The, the girls haven't had a preseason match either, so I expect the first 15, 20 minutes to be for both teams to be a, a little sloppy. Oh, exactly, yeah. Without the, the preseason uh, play, you know, all you're doing is playing your other teammates. Riley Krattenmacher. Out to the wing. Uh, turnover from Riley. Medway, possession through. And you like to see the goalkeeper be loud and aggressive there. Absolutely. Klusky puts the ball in play. Lillian York outside. Little poke a turnover. Nice step there from Ashley Butler. Back to Gabriella Siri. And you're noticing the change of play already because there's a couple opportunities that would be perfect for slide tackles. Yep. And slide tackles are not allowed. Nice step over there from Trendle. Outside to Veal. Nice cross outside. And if you notice too, we're gonna see a little bit of uh, more delayed action as the balls are placed around the field instead of having our youth soccer players yep. uh, being ball uh, keepers. Jillian Wright coming up the wing, and there's a turnover, Hiller throw. 
which will not be a throw. Do we say kicking? How about kicking? I'm still going to call it a throw in. It's yeah. going to be a short lived <laughs> rule. Yeah. We hope. We hope this all goes away by next season. Ball's got to stay on the ground. I mean, that was that's a stupid call because it, it bounced once. Right. I mean, I understand the safety concerns, but sure. I think this MIAA should have been following mass soccer and USSF here. It also puts more pressure on not just the players, but the referees. Yes, yes it does. And you see, it's still like regular season play, only two referees, which is which is a normal, I mean, they try to always get three. You always try to get the line guys in there yep. and the, and the uh, field ref. But they're going with uh, two referees per game. But the good news is they're on the field playing, which is all they want to do. Yep. Yep, give the kids a chance to play. Perloff with the pressure. Jillian Wright again. Good body control. Somebody's Kelly title. Hiller throw. Nice cut back. Good recovery though from Tiffany Mikulis. Hiller throw. Is that Kratenmeyer down there with the throw in? Uh, no, that was Mikulis. Mikulis? Mikulis, yeah. Uh, Trendle couldn't control that. Good step there from Title. Well, you know what's nice about our angle that we have here this year, Steve, is that we have some height. Normally yes. we've always been on ground level, ground level or uh, three or four height bleacher level. And uh, But the sun being in our eyes does not help much when it tries to call the numbers. This Krattenmacher outside. Oh, nice flick. That was Joanna Dumont. There we go, DuPont. Yeah, both teams are sloppy, just can't string passes together. It was a good through ball. Keep her well off her line. Medway taking a while to get it out of their zone. Yep, good possession. Just work the ball, simple passes, let the other team make a mistake. What, I think, he, what did he just say? I don't know if he called the push. I, I, th I thought I heard him say something COVID. <laughs> <laughs> John Ritz thought so as well. So you're not alone. The only thing I can think of is maybe if you're shoulder to shoulder. And Ava's mask was down over off her nose, so. That could have been a COVID violation, sure. Because if your mask is down, it's it's an indirect free kick for the other team. Oh, this could be tricky. Good ball. Oh, nice turn over there. I like that.
You're going to have to see a lot more through balls on the ground in the box instead of your traditional crosses because you can't head the ball. So. Krattenmacher back to the keeper. McCluskey outside. A lot of space in between Hopkinton's midfield and their defenders. Could give Medway a good chance to exploit that. You'd like to see less green in between. There we go. I'm sure good some, idea. I'm sure some of the COVID rules have something to do with that. That extra space. Mm, shouldn't. You should, you, still, you you should, that, still, right. you should still go to it and close down the space. Like you said, it is their first match. Sensei, back to the keeper, back to Sensei. Nice turn, good step there from Beautiful step. Alexis Veal. outside. Perlov cuts it back in. Good step from title. Yep, that's what they're calling when yeah. you're too close defending. Too close defending, yep. Kluski's going to get there. That's it. Good quick release. Nice pass up. <laughs> and we're halfway through the first quarter. Zero, zero. All in all, it looks like a regular game so far, except for seeing this happen on the sideline. Let's see what Ava could do here. She's got a lot open in the middle. Oh. It was actually a good idea. I don't. It wasn't a shot, but I think she would have picked her head up and seen the keeper off the line, like she was. She should have put it on net. Ellie Mahan checking in for the Mustangs. Turnover, Hiller throw in. Title put it back in play. Perloff with a turn. Another throw for the Hillers. Nice ball. Good, good pass from Title. Nobody was there from the Hillers. Uh, you would have liked to see yeah, York bring that down. Exactly. Capture it and then uh, she find someone open. Nobody was talking to her to tell Even her she had time. If you had a dribble to the outside, at least give someone a chance to yep. get open for a pass. Nice job from Ava. Nice 
Nice play from Title. Good footwork from Perlov. In the middle to Butler. York tries to go outside to DuPont. Veal with a nice put back. Good touch. So Gail breaking that play up. Yep. It's funny hearing the whistles and see nobody putting their hands to their face. That takes yep. a lot of getting used to too. Yep, the electronic whistle held in the hand. Just a little button, we, uh, tap it with your thumb. Yep. And they're fairly loud. Yeah. Way to see what that's going to be like during volleyball. Brooke Bert Whistle checks in for the Hillers along with Kylie Skiba. And you'd like to see Title give that right back to her. She took yes. a touch and allowed the defender to close it down. Yeah, it's nice when they give it go when the go actually works. Right back to her, right back to her. Hiller with a nice job with possession here the last uh, eight or nine minutes. Another futsal throw. step from title outside to Perlop. That's it. Medway's goalkeeper is very aggressive with her positioning. She's way off her line. Yeah, but she's also in control of her defense. I don't know if you could hear yeah. with the headsets on, but I could hear her backing out the order. She is very in control. with a just puts the ball out for first corner kick of the game. And now, uh, go ahead, Steve, explain how the corner kicks work. So it's going to be just like a throw in. It's got to be um, on the ground. So once again, it's it's more like a futsal throw in. Right. You can't right. put it in the air into the box. So I would be normally used to seeing a nice kick up in the air in front of the net where everyone collapses on it, and that was... Bouncing. Yeah, which is nice because it... That could call for some trouble. Yeah, see, I don't understand that rule. It makes uh, absolutely no you sense. You know, I could see... <laughs> I mean, it's tough, especially on a field like this, to uh, keep it on the ground, but there, there's ways. You can't keep the ball on the ground. Perlov with a turnover. DuPont gets there first. Touchback title. Like to see the girls switch the field just like that. Ball's been on this side too much. Good idea. Yeah, changing the field is, uh, is so important. You, you know, especially at 11 v 11. 6 v 6, you can control one side or whatever. But right. with 11 v 11, changing the field is what uh, makes all the plays possible. Three minutes left here in the first quarter, no score. And a little extra ball goes rolling into the net. <laughs> Throw in Medway. Nice steal 
kill from Veal. Back to Butler, outside to McCulis. Nice turn, back to Butler. Oh, she was trying to hit DuPont on the wing. Good step from, oh, oh, good call. Nice positioning from Perlov. Siri coming up to take the kick. of the kick. Yeah. <laughs> Tiffany with a throw in. If the folks at home that see all those cones on the side, that is not the sideline. That is the spectators' social distancing markers. That's a good ball. Uh, DuPont didn't read it right. She came in first. Yeah, it was too much in front of uh, Perlov. And yeah, what is it? Each player is allowed. Two, two fans? Two fans, yeah. They get they get these lanyards to bring with them, and uh, the high school has staff um, near the parking lot where people come in, and they check them for the lanyards. And we have uh, three or four people behind us just sneaking in <laughs> just to watch a little soccer. So technically, they're not at the field. Technically. That's right. That's field three still. Butler, pass back. Krattenmacher. That was two long whistles for, oh, we gonna see a cat come out here? Oh, timeout. Oh. A timeout? No, that was, no, that was a quarter. Oh, so, all right, so we're still. Yeah, now oh, a two minute they, break. Gotcha. It changed real fast for me. I wasn't watching the countdown. Well, I, I maybe they do like they do in a normal game where they stop it at the last two minutes. And it's the referee's time then. I didn't see that, yeah. I didn't check. Which, which makes sense. And as you can see, John, down on the bench there at the clockers table, uh, every team sanitizes before they get back to the bench. Yep. And we can smell it up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first quarter was about what we thought, Mike. A little, a little erratic. Little wreck. You know what? I was afraid that I wasn't going to see the contact that we were seeing. So there was still a little, little forearm pushes here and there. I was afraid that was going to go away. And you know, that's that that's a big part of the game. Yep. Letting that other person know you're there and, and so forth, and in in uh, in protecting that ball. So we'll have uh, Rich Corby is out there, the athletic director. He's out there shagging balls, getting them back in line. For everybody, big difference. And I also want to talk about the uh, trainers. Uh, every game there is a trainer on duty for every game. But normally there's five games going on when we're calling a game like this here. So the trainers in their little uh, John Deere wagon go from field to field. They get radio communications with every field so they can get the uh, trainer there as quick as possible. In this case, the trainer is parked here, and they even have, I don't know, John, if you want to get the, even get the massage table out, just in case. See it over there uh, by the Jeep? So, in case anyone needs any kind of conditioning, they're here, and they can do everything right here on the field. And that is nice to have a trainer available, you know, for your whole game. So as we said, it'll be a 10 game season, five weekends, a home and away each weekend. Yeah. And, and you will see sports here live on HCAM, HCAM Ed, as well as our YouTube channel. We'll be streaming here every weekend, Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, our schedule is on HCAM.TV. 
all the events uh, lined up ahead of time. So if you want to go ahead and uh, subscribe, you can click on the event ahead of time and, and set a reminder so you know when your game's coming on. And the girls are back out on the field for the second quarter. And they're changing sides every quarter instead of every half. And I found out today, too, I learned, field hockey was changing from halves to quarters anyways beyond oh. COVID. They, that was uh, part of the uh, rule changes this year uh, before COVID. Even before. Yeah. Oh, you would have liked to have seen DuPont possess that, hold it a little more. She didn't have a lot of support. Nice possession from Brooke. Siri. Butler with possession. Outside to Tiffany. Back to Butler. Veal. Hiller's really dominating from a possession standpoint, just haven't been able to break through in that last third. Right. Nice outside to Tiffany. Touch to DuPont. Not at numbers for the Hillers. There's one player in the box and three white shirts around her. Ball, little hesitation from McCluskey. Well done. Brooke brings it down. Great through ball. Got foot on it. Get a foot. Just need some support. Hiller's late coming in. Back to Butler. Yeah, nobody charging the keeper. No. Easily handed by Catone. A little shout out to our camera operator, John Ritz, who is fighting off the sun, looking through that little screen, little uh, two and a quarter inch screen there. <laughs> and he's uh, keeping the uh, ball on the screen for you. Nice job, John Ritz. Siri, back to Tiffany, down the wing. DuPont couldn't control that, came in hot. Good switch. Title to Veal. Good through ball. Ava was actually backtracking there. Take by Siri. Good recovery, though. She broke a cardinal rule. Never lift your knee above your waist. Use your chest. Uh, Through ball to DuPont. A throw in, I believe, the side of the flag. Yeah, I couldn't tell. I was looking at the. I was looking at the back of John's head. I, I was looking tell. at the metal <laughs> stanchion for the lights. <laughs> yep, it is a throw. It is a throw. Okay. I tell you, this is a nice vantage point. Better than uh, being on the bleachers on the ground on the other fields. Fruit Street was the toughest place to build yeah. the game. I remind everyone at home too oh, on that, that uh, we're also going to be bringing you some golf in uh, cross country this fall. 
uh, well, highlights from that because those games you really can't do live. I was going to say. Fall a golf team around 18 holes is not easy. We are not the PGA Network. That's for sure. I wouldn't think we have the equipment for that anyways, do we? Well, yeah. I mean, we have, like we use it now, we use it uh, mobile hotspots okay. and, and uh, streaming capabilities. But the action, yeah. you know, everyone's starting off at different holes. Yeah. You either follow one foursome or, I mean, even if you put two or three cameras out there, how do you get all that action? Yeah. But we're looking at ways. The coaches, we've been working with the, uh, all the coaching staffs of all the teams on how to uh, cover their sport. Of course, soccer and field hockey, we know. Cross country and uh, golf is really different and very difficult. So we'll be bringing some of that. You can uh, catch that at uh, Tom Nappy's HCAM News live uh, on HCAM on Thursday nights. Bailey Condon down the wing. Oh, turnover. Uh, too much. Yeah, just let Ava a little too much. And we know the wind didn't take it because it was blown against it. <laughs> It was the right idea from Brooks, you just let her. Right. Trendle checking back in. Tuttle with the throw. And we got a sub? Here we do. Kira O'Connor checking in for Joanna DuPont. And Medway is going to make a switch. <laughs> Did you notice how the referee made him turn back to the table to make sure they put the hand sanitizer on? All new stuff for us. I'm not sure why you have to put hand sanitizer on your hands because you can't touch the ball with your hand. Well, I believe because you're touching other players could be the case. I don't know. I don't know. I make it up. That's why I'm the color guy. Yeah. I, make the, I make you know I it make sounds good. stuff up. <laughs> we have a lot of air time to fill here. We got, we got less than 13 minutes here. Because <laughs> you know, if we don't know it or don't see it, we make it up. Medway with a better job of possession so far here in the second quarter. And offsides. Kelly Nicholas came from an offside position and received the ball. Now, how hard is it calling offsides with two referees on a field? So I'm, I'm not a fan of the two referee system. I'd either rather have the one ref that's in shape or the, the three refs. Right. Um, and yeah, now, why do you say the word in shape? Let's tell people at home what that means. So there's a there's when a lot of times in games and when you have just a single ref, you'll find that um, they're not always they can't keep up with the run of play. Right. And so what this allows is the two referees they split the field diagonally and they each go to the midfield and I just don't I don't like it because it it can doesn't necessarily f flow the game as freely. But you could also argue that the, the more refs you have, you know, the better the game should be called. I, you know, I'm with, I'm with you on that, but I also agree with you on the uh, one ref and three ref and the two. Because the one ref is still in control of the game, whether you have three or it's him, himself. Right. The uh, others are just throwing up the flags, which is a help. Yep. And they are in a true position to call the offsides or out of bounds and so forth. Right. Oh, nice take. Good shot from Kylie Skiba. Sophomore, midfielder. And in the time of COVID, we are lucky to get two refs. I uh, heard the referee situation is very sparse right now as the uh, refereeing population is getting older. They're avoiding uh, the situations due to COVID. See, like right here, the referee yeah. was out of position. Way out of position. And there's two of them. It's just a pet peeve. And then there's offsides. I'm with you on it. That's, you know, all your years of the, the coach coming out in you. 
I guess I want to say. Yeah. You know? Because that's all my soccer experience is from coaching. I never played. It's all from coaching, and your frustrations are there. kick. Yep. That was an unintentional takedown from O'Connor. Right, if it was intentional, you would have saw a cat come up. <laughs> but overall, the calls are coming out very, very well from uh, this crew. They don't have, uh, it doesn't seem like they're taking control of the game. They are letting them play. Handled well by McCluskey. See right there, she's got Perloff all alone. Yep. For a, for a break down the wing. Just like to see a little quicker distribution sure. from the keeper. And that's oh, not no. a good pass. I mean, because the kicker did not have to leave it on the ground. She could have put it up in the air. The, yep. I mean, the goalie. Yep. So you just had to, uh, yeah, that was not good. Hillers dodged a bullet there. Again, it is the first game. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Yep. There you go. Quick distribution, much better. Sloppy pass there. You know, all that work through all that pressure to come up with a sloppy pass like that is, is hard. Yep. Because here she is. She blew off three defenders just to kick it to somebody else. It's a COVID call. COVID <laughs> call. McCluskey controls that. A little more than halfway through the second quarter here. 0-0 zero, zero on a beautiful day. I tell you, this is a great day with the exception of the wind, which I think the wind feels good up here. It just uh, makes our audio sound worse, and I don't need the help sounding any worse. <laughs> you can do that all on your own. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know how bad I sound inside the <laughs> athletic center. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice. It's nice teaming up with you again, and this uh, first time teaming up for uh, soccer. Yeah, yeah, it's usually volleyball. Usually volleyball, which we can talk about. That's going to take place uh, for the fall part two season. Yep. Which is uh, February. February, March, early April. Fe I, I want to say February 2nd is the start of fall two. Uh, or, yeah, February 2nd. Uh, football as well. And I heard some interesting rumors about a Thanksgiving Day game. Really? Someone said, uh, you know, rumors are what they are. Rumors say something about calling it a Holy Saturday game. So there's a very good chance that on Saturday of Thanksgiving, not Thanksgiving Day, but Saturday of Thanksgiving, there could be a Clockers Hillers matchup in Ashland. Siri with a direct kick. Kind of hung that one up. No pressure from the Hillers. But the one thing I learned about COVID is not to play it that far ahead. Yeah. <laughs> or anything. Good track oh. down from Butler. Yeah, that was. Now you see the 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 uh, caution that uh, Chiplick took on that. And again, that's where the COVID comes in their mind. Other than that, she would have just ran right through it yep. on a normal day. And of course, our athletic director is getting the illegal fans to make sure they put their mask on. Oh, no, he is, he is, uh, they do have a lanyard, but he's telling them to put the mask on, which is great. Lillian York checks back in, as well as Lauren Cho. And 
I'm not sure if you also heard about the COVID coach for every team. Yep. COVID coach is, uh, his only concern is to make sure all the COVID regulations are covered. I also want to take this moment here to, uh, to thank our Hopkins High School IT department that made all this possible by setting it us setting us up with internet so we could stream these games. They worked hard uh, for the past two weeks getting a Wi-Fi signal out here for us to broadcast the game. So uh, Ashok Ghos, who's uh, our IT administrator, uh, Chapin, uh, Porcella, who did a great job figure it all out even up until this morning <laughs> uh, our first game was at nine o'clock and uh he was making tweaks at 8 45 uh to get this going and i want to thank chapin and, and the whole the whole crew it's a it's an all-team effort there at the high school to make this happen goal kick brooke checks back in what is the uh, halftime break? Must be five or ten minutes. Five, five or ten, yeah. Because the quarter breaks are two, so it's probably ten. So field hockey was five every quarter, so even the halftime was five. Oh, okay. Maybe So maybe the halftime is only five. Well, we'll, find out, we'll find out when the clock changes in uh, three minutes and 42 seconds. Or whatever the field time is. There's a chance for... It's Krakenmeyer outside to Tuttle. Thought she was gonna yeah. pull that back. Medway with a switch of the field. Tiffany steps. Throw in Hillers. Taken down there. I'm surprised that wasn't called. Definitely a difference in the sound of the whistle when, yeah. they, when they sound it towards the ground instead of up in the air. Yep. It does carry a lot differently. Sloppy passing in the back. Gonna settle that now. And just out of bounds. Yep. Feel is just a hair outside. Yep. Final two minutes here. Yeah, the clock stopped now, yep. so. Final time will be kept on the field. Back in and over the end line. Goal kick, Hillers. Krottenmacher, outside title. Hillers throw. I tell you, one thing I love about this turf field is how you can see that outside line yeah. so well up here. Uh, Butler with good possession, but she's called for a little push. It's been a tale of two quarters. Hopkinton possession dominance in the first, and Medway's really had a, a much stronger possession here in the right. second. It, it, 
they do look equally matched, and it looked like the same quarters, just different shirts. Yeah, everybody going yep. to our right yep. controls the ball. <laughs> Maybe it's the sun. And neither team has really had what a, what a shot on goal. No. There's a turnover. Brooke and McCluskey off her line, good and aggressive. Nice play. Very good. Nice play from the senior. Oh, not to nobody. And there there's is. the half. So we finished the first half 0-0. Zero, zero. About what we thought, Mike. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, it, I call it first game jitters, but it's the first game. It looked like a preseason game, like yep. we expected. Um, the girls playing very well. Uh, a lot of uh, they, they control the ball pretty good, but it's the give and goes are off, and uh, they seem to do a lot of passing into either open space or uh, opposing players. Yeah, they're, they're not on the foot of their own teammates. Yeah, and passing into open space is good, but they're just they're too strong to. Well, be open that's space. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and of course they're not they're not falling in on the ball either. The, it seems like the opposing players will get there first. And that's the same with both teams. Yep. So the girls have a 10 minute break here and we'll be back. Ten minutes. Oh, it was five. Now it's 10. Okay. Yeah, so 10 minutes. And I don't think we can talk that long on air for 10 minutes. Nope. Uh, not on our first game. So we're going to take a break. John, well, if you want, you can show the clock so people at home know what's going on. And we'll, we'll kill the audio. And we'll be back for a second half of Pillar Mustang Soccer. And we're ready for the start of the third quarter, or the first quarter of the second half. I don't know what we want to call yeah, it. We'll like. call it third quarter. I like third quarter. Okay. Tied at 0-0, first game of the season. Yeah, just to recap, uh, the first quarter, Hopkins dominated the, uh, I would say, the offense more Yep. Then Medway, yep. second quarter, it was a role reversal where Medway dominated. Both happened to go in the same direction, uh, right to left. Uh, so here we are back again. The, the goalies and the teams did switch positions. So we have Hopkins going left to right. And there's a throw in. Yes, I said throw in, even though it's the foot. Yep, one of the COVID safety changes. One of the many. Medway with a futsal throw. Well, so far the only thing I'm missing is a good slide tackle because there were several opportunities where it would have been fantastic. It could have been a, uh, a game changer for lack of a better term. But also, we did get to see our first corner kick, which looked like a, what, like a, a throw in that throw we'll see Yeah, exactly. And Field with an interception of the pass. Put back in to McCluskey. Good hands. Nice having that knee up, even though there's nobody crashing in on her. Ava with the ball at her feet. Gets that to Trendle. And turnover. Right with a through ball. And nice poke. Kluski did have it covered. Goal kick killers. I do miss seeing the little ball kids here, though. Right after the balls. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Hopkins Youth Soccer used to provide uh, the little girls would cover the, the uh, girls' team and the boys are the boys. And it was always nice seeing them running around. And they were so excited to pass it off to one of their players. But we're lucky this year. It was a recent change on the TVL in uh, Hopkinton about allowing parents and spectators. So we do have parents and spectators. You see them on the far side of the field. Cones in front of them because that is their six foot of separation. Rich Corbier out here at eight o'clock this morning, putting out the cones, getting the field ready. Yeah, what a lot of work this athletic director is. First year, 
And his first task he has to deal with is the Triple E. Right. And right. also, and we, we interviewed him a few times on the Hopkins Hangout Hour, and we, we, we talked about, you know, you know about the Triple E situation, and he says, oh, yeah, Triple E's got nothing on this. <laughs> Butler with the ball. Perlov was calling for it. Is she going to be able to get there? A little oh. too hard. That's a good idea, though. The good news this year here, we don't have to worry about Triple E because all the games are on Saturday and Sunday afternoons. Yep. Morning and afternoons. And uh, there is no Triple E threat this year due to the dry spring that we had. Oh, not COVID? That's right. Well, the COVID changed everything else, but I'm just we don't have to worry about Triple E on top of it. And avian, there's no avian flu. And ticks, ticks are down, so we're in good shape. <laughs> Except we still have COVID. <laughs> oh, good step from right. Yeah, Hopkinson's being sloppy with the ball. Yeah, they gotta get the gel because their practices aren't that wonderful. That they have what little practices they got. Again, they do a lot of stuff online, but you can't touch the ball online. Right. So, it, it, the thing, too, that a lot of folks don't understand is it's those practices, it's those after practices where you gel with your teammates. Yep. I said, you, you gel with your teammates and you get to feel how everyone plays. You know, it's, I don't want to call it pickup soccer. No, but it's, but it is. But they don't know. They, yeah. They're not used to it. You know, how many, look, you know, great, a couple of years, you know, there's a few seniors and juniors, but you got freshmen and, and sophomores that never played with these girls before. Right. Unless they were lucky enough to play club or, or town soccer with somebody. Nice step from Butler. Tries to get it to Trendle. Nice step with, from Tiffany. But again, interviewing the players and the coaches, it's the kids are just happy to be out on the pitch. Throw in Hillers. Hopkins having a hard time being first on ball a lot of times. It seems like Medway will beat them to the ball. However, they wind up trapping that Medway player and either forcing a turnover or uh, forcing it out of bounds. That one sails through without anyone touching it. Nice job from Ava. Medway throw. A nice ball into the box. A little too strong. You know, a funny thing right there, in a situation, uh, you would have probably saw the girl help the other one up after that, but you can't touch him. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, good ball in. Oh. Klusky was frozen there. Good news is, so was the Medway player. 
Lauren Beach. And title with a turnover. Beach will put the ball back in play. 0-0 zero, zero. halfway through the third quarter here in Hopkinton. Medway 0, Hiller 0. Tuttle put the ball back in play. One thing I've noticed that Hopkinton is missing this year compared to last year is speed up front. I know Ava's got good wheels, but just haven't seen a lot of speed from the Hillers. And as you look down at this shot here, you're gonna see all the bags hanging on the, uh, on the fence. The uh, athletic department put out carabiners every six feet so the girls both home and away can hang up their bags off the ground and know where they have to stand they thought of everything here it's a good ball and there's some speed kluski come off your line come off your line good oh, save nice good smother i too was nervous that she did not come off the line Great save. Yeah, she did a did a good job of not letting the the ground force the ball out of her hands. She timing was perfect. Yep. Top hand over the ball, push it onto the ground. have seen Ashley use title on that one. Yeah. Ava had the defender right in front of her. Throw in Hillers. Brooke checks back in as well as Lauren Cho. Skiba with the ball. Oh. Taba. A little loose with the pass. You know, looking for a ball right 
right now. And we're back at play. <laughs> Can we call that a COVID delay? Yeah. Butler brings the ball down. Swing it, swing it. I see a lot of the front line just like waiting for the ball to yep. come to them and not running into the open space or uh, running to the ball. Nice Tiffany play, does a good job drawing the foul there. Yeah. Siri with the ball. Another turnover for the Hillers. Way, puts the ball back in play. Nice step from Cho. Oh no, that was Butler. I wish Ava would have picked her head up too because she was trying to get the ball to Brooke, but Brooke actually, both center defenders, central defenders, were going towards Brooke. Right. Ava could have just flicked the ball on and kept going herself. Sure. Once again, goalkeepers cannot kick, put the ball past midfield. Uh, no whistle. Coach called it out. Yep. <laughs> There's no whistle. You got to play the whistle. Less than four minutes left in the third quarter. Mike Trosha, Steve Sweet Apple on the call with John Ritz. Nice step from Siri. On the camera. Kick for Medway. McElhaney's going to take it. No, no, she's not. She's going to leave it for Landry. He's going to give it to McElhaney. And then McElhaney puts it in. See, that makes no sense. Yeah. They just put the ball in the box in the air yeah. off a short pass from a corner kick. There's trouble right there. Yeah. Trouble right there. Offsides. Ref was in great position for that. Yep. That's where it works. That could have went the other way on the one referee position. Back to the ball. Cho with a nice feel. Overlapping run. Uh, sloppy, sloppy, yeah. Ava. Title with a step. McElhaney outside. DuPont with a steal. Uh, okay. So we're at uh, the two minute mark. The time will be kept on the field. Timer goes to stop the clock.
Medway working the ball into the middle. Title puts it out. Throw in Medway. And what I've noticed, Mike, is that the Hiller girls are very slow to the ball, both offensively and defensively. Right. It could all just be a you know a lack of touches during practice and no scrimmages. But they're slow both stepping on defense and receiving. Right. One of the things through my illustrious youth soccer and John Smith soccer career of coaching, first on ball, get to the ball and be the first one there. Just steamroll yourself, get there fast, and get there before the other player. And it makes a difference. Joe gets it to Brooke, yep. Oh, wait, Ava, oh, wait oh. There. too much. Too much in front. Too much. Oh. It was the right idea from Brooke. Right, just a little too much in front. Yep. And again, you, you know, the lack of practice, lack of touches. Yep. It all makes a difference. So, and, and again, we're, we're also going to treat this season as the educational year, like a sub varsity where there is no postseason. Right. So, right. You, you play it for record, and it is what it is. And you're out of the field. You are at least uh, with your teammates. And at least you get that experience. I mean, these poor kids, they lost their whole school year last year. Everything. Yep. And there's the third quarter comes to an end. 0-0 zero, zero here at the high school on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. I tell you, what a great day to be out on the field. This is, this is why I always loved fall soccer over spring soccer any day because spring soccer was still winter yeah. and it was yeah. wet. You got a better and chance of good weather in the exactly. fall. Exactly. The fall is always so much better. Um, but I, I, I just love the fall season. You know, just waking up in the morning, everything smells like football to me uh, during the fall. So it's it's nice that uh, we're able to get the season underway, get you some sports, which we will be covering both varsity and junior varsity soccer and field hockey on Saturdays and Sundays here from the Hopkins Athletic uh, Fields. This is uh, fields number, well, technically this is field number five. It's four and five is kind of mixed together right. with softball and 3.5 baseball. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, I, I, I still call it field, uh, uh, five. Field, field five. Yeah, definitely field five. So and uh, it's the driest field out of all the fields, being the turf with the fantastic drainage. And for all the old hillers at home that has played here before, knows how wet down here gets. And this uh, field was horrible. It was this. This here was the second wettest field. The first wettest field would be uh, uh, the practice fields down there behind the field six softball. It has seven, eight. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Would yeah. be just, you, you couldn't even practice on it. Here was the worst playing field uh, due to uh, just the way the water ran off of the hill here. One, two, and three. Everything just came down to here. And again, this here was just field. It used to be farmland. This is all Terry Farm property. This is, it was all the old field. So we're lucky that we were able to. Uh, obtain this and uh, through the efforts of uh, athletic director at the time, Dee King, and her committee uh, got this field put in. Good it is job. a very nice field. What's nice about the artificial fields, they are very, very expensive and you have to maintain them, but you can use them anytime. Use them and we got lights. It's it's fantastic. This is a, it's a, it's a great thing that this town has uh, supported the schools in this effort. And uh, we'll see what happens when they go for the field three replacement uh, next time, which is right behind us. Get rid of that huge crown. You know, you stand on each side of the field. Steve, if I was on this side and you were on the other side, yeah, I would see you from the waist up. There's such a big crown in the middle. All right, we're ready to get the final quarter underway here. 0-0 tie between Medway and Hopkinton. 
Hopkinton's last game was last fall in the uh, Division II South sections. They lost in the second round to Old Rochester, three to one. That was down in, uh, where was that? Oh, uh, Rich has got to go hunt for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was down at, uh, what was that school? Oh, I forget where it was there. played. We were there that night. And then uh, Medway's last game was in the Division II sectional finals where they lost to Holliston 3-0. Yes. Uh oh. Yeah. Could have been trouble. And Ashley with a little bump. See what the rules are here. Yeah, it was a handball, I thought. Should be green ball. Uh, I thought it was Ashley with the bump. I, th I thought it was a handball. I thought I'm white. Guys on YouTube, you can use your DVR purpose right now. Slide that back, and <laughs> you want to send tell me a us text. Which, tell us who's right. Text, text my phone. Find out what that was. I thought it was and a foul on Hopkinton. Know. Mike thought it was a foul on Bedway. Yeah. And since Green kicked off, I guess I was right. <laughs> nice cut back from Dupont. Look at the freshman. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, oh, nice ball. There's the goal. Oh no, calling off sides. The ref was out of position though. He was he was a good six or seven yards behind that run of play. That wow. Nicely set up. It was. It was a nice run from the freshman. From referee point of view, being behind the ball, calling off sides is very, very difficult. I would not want to be in that position. And he was looking into the sun. Yeah. It, it, that's the second one today. So it, it's, it's not good. I would think having the three referees. I three mean, referees is the best. No, no, I mean, in this COVID situation, oh. you look where the yellow line is. Oh, I know why. Because of where the players have to stand. There would be less than six feet standing next to. Uh, yeah, they only on do the they only do three reps um, when you get to the state playoffs. Then oh, they really? go Yeah, then they go three reps. It's only if you get to the finals, the final four. Otherwise, they just stick with the two referees. They still, really? Okay, well, yeah, you see soccer all year, so I'm going to take your word for that. I guess I'm going back to my town soccer days when the associations always paid three referees. Yeah. Well, high school kids are. Yeah, three, three, re three refs. Oh. It's, the, it's the best uh, yeah. system. Trap, trap, trap. Oh, uh, keeps it in. See, that would have been a header. Yep. Any other yep. time? A little bit changes the game a little. And so far, I think I only saw really three opportunities for really good slide tackles that would have been like like game changes. Yeah. So I don't think we're missing out too much about have not having slide tackles. And McCluskey's got a run to get the ball. Ref's yep. going to get a ball. Rich is getting a ball. Yeah, Rich was out of the woods for the last one. He's, uh, I, I got to hand it to this athletic director. You know, again, he, he could have staff here, but the, you keep the staff to a minimum, keep everyone safe, and he takes it upon himself to uh, oversee the whole operation. Throw in Medway. Now, back in my day of playing sports, it would have been a freshman out there shagging that ball. <laughs> not, not an AD. Uh, Beach with a turn. Title. Oh. And Siri. Keep it in. Krattenmacher just pushes that one out. Medway throw in. Throw kick. Whatever we're going to call it. <laughs> we'll stick with throw it. I want this game to sound familiar too. 
Siri just gets it up. Back, I think. Yep, I hear you. Something went. I can't tell if that's still going. Let me see, John. That's why I should have a better go. That's all right. And if you just pick that out. Yeah, yeah. It's, all right, so it's definitely a, a stadium issue. Uh, hopefully we're still online here. Uh, I'm getting a little error message here on our screen. Yeah. Feel with the interception. Nice touch. Joe carrying the ball up. Doesn't have many options. We got power back. I hope we're streaming here because my, it, it really messed up my display on my device. And I can't see what we have. So I'm going to let you do some talking, Steve, while I uh, see if I can. Throw this up. Throw in Midway. Another air pass from the Hillers. Steve, it looks like we're still streaming. Must be with that. I just button. get that back up here. Yep. Nice step from Siri. Get outside. Tiffany. He's feeling the 
effects of that one. Hi, Steve. Good news is we're still online. Everyone on YouTube, we had a little, couple of glitch here with the power outage. We lost, as you saw, the clock went out, and uh, so we're still going here. Oh. At least you can still use that. Must be off the line. Something different here. They had it, but pulled back at the last minute, and I think it pushed it into the One thing I noticed with Bedway, the double teams has been uh, effective against soccer. Yeah, they're in drive. They're quick the ball team. Corner tank. Uh, I always told the kids, so it's double T, that means somebody's open. Yep. <laughs> ball quick. Like 
we thought it should be a given go. And Hopkinton's trying to make too many long passes. Too early in the season, they haven't touched enough. They might not have the leg strength. Timing's off. Yeah, yeah you don't know. be a little selfish at times to take an extra touch. Yeah, why not? Nice crack there from her lob. They're well batched, equally batched, which tells you that the process of, uh, of practices throughout the league, you know, the way the rules are set up, you know, nobody is uh, better than the other. Yep. Uh, due to the fact that, you know, I, I remember the times that, you know, the coaches would bring their people indoors, but space, but time with John Smith to do this because the fields were terrible. Right. But you can't do that now. It's a whole different rule, whole set of different rules. And it appears everybody is abiding by them. Husky with that. Quickly out. She's got great form. Nice, nice, uh, nice form as a goal. Which program is earning his money today? Shagging these balls. Switch the field. Very good ball. I don't know if that was an intentional tubby, but it was nice. Yep. Rather big on. Headway ball. Two and a half minutes left here in the final game. Final, final quarter. quarter. <laughs> the first game. We'll get it right. This is our first game too, so you know you gotta cut us some slack. <laughs> seconds. Team could win is if something unlucky happened. Just over the bar. And 
that's it, there folks. Is. First game of the season is under their belts. Hockey to zero, Medway zero. Kind of what we thought would, would happen, like we said. The yeah, first absolutely. Half is absolutely. Kind of what we expected. Right, and this this is what we saw. We saw this in the NFL too. You know, the first couple games seemed like preseason games, even though you had all the starters out there. Here you have all the starters, and it's exactly what we thought it was going to look like. Yep. You know, the, you, you saw the little mistakes, but it wasn't from, and I wouldn't even call them little mistakes. It's, you know, nobody's going to take proof. Nobody's, yep. Nobody knows uh, the other person's speed or, or how strong their foot is and so forth. Yep. I think you got to give uh, Kristen McCluskey the man of the match award. Without a doubt. Two, two, one great save and one very good save. So that now in the days of COVID, this is what handshaking is going to look like. Right. And I, I expect a little uh, team cheer, similar to what we would see at the um, field hockey level, and, and like you would see like at the youth level, uh, you know, potato chip, yeah. potato chip, potato chip. You know, they still do that in swimming. Right. Yeah, that's that's one of the big cheers of the swim meets. But there you go. There's your uh, COVID handshake. Um, and there's the elbow bump for the coaches. Who uh, I think they're both happy with the way their girls played for for the first game with for no, the first no game, scrimmages, no no real, no real practice. practice. Yeah, I mean it, it's almost nice. What I would have done if I could have pulled it off in a situation like this, we don't have the scrimmages. You know, get the boys in there, get a get a boys team. You know, to to match each other up, just to have different people, because you know everyone's coached the same. You know what your offensive plays are. You know what your defensive plays are. Uh, how do you beat that when you know what the other person's going to do? Yeah. So for Mike Terosia and John Ritz, this is Steve Sweetapple. Uh, we've got the JV girls game coming yep. up next. Uh, stay tuned.